Hello everyone, my name is Mad Radio DXA UK and I want to welcome you to this video where I'm talking about um, Iceland uh, finding the ending transmissions on the long wave band. Now what it is, is that um, Iceland, they had two frequencies um, where they were transmitting on the long wave band, one at 9 kilohertz and 207 kilohertz. The tra uh, transmitter for the 207 kilohertz uh, frequency uh, was closed uh, back uh, last year in sort of like the end of uh, February 2023. And... Uh, it turns out the remaining frequency of 189 kilohertz has now gone um, off air and is and won't be returning back on the air at all. Now, from the news that I've seen, uh, looking at some um, the websites that I check out for medium wave and long wave news, and also looking at the uh, video that I was uh, uh, seeing of Oxford shortwave log, it um, it seems to be that um, the uh, 189 kilohertz um, transmitter. Um, stopped working on um early in was it early september um 2024 and they haven't been able to repair the transmitter and they've um decided that they're not going to bother um, it seems you know to um to try and repair the transmitter and therefore not only uh switch off that transmitter but also um cease long wave transmissions all um together now, um, unfortunately, this is the way things are going at the moment here in Europe. Not only is medium wave ending, but long wave is too. Um, of course, we've had a number of medium wave stations um, leaving over the past uh, two or three years. In particular, I would say it's uh, due to the rise in energy prices, um, thanks to a certain geopolitical um, event that started sort of like, um, you know, around the beginning of a uh, 2022. 20, uh, and I suppose the same thing is happening with uh, long wave too, you know, for the same reasons, you know, rising um, energy prices, but also things like um, long wave uh, parts for long wave transmitters, which um, for what I've seen from what I've read on the Internet is just getting harder to uh, obtain. I suppose this, um, it's because, you know, there's uh, very few companies or there's maybe just one company, for example, making uh, long wave transmitter parts. Maybe they're just too expensive um, as well. And also you have to factor in, factor in too maybe the loss of audience, you know, they're moving to other platforms like, uh, for example, uh, digital or they, you know, they're still um, listening on the uh, FM band. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a shame that this is happening for, you know, for the for the DXs, but it's expected. And this is why I say, you know, always listen to what you can, you know, and record and archive what you can, because you never know when it's going to end. Right. Um for here in Europe, um, we've got uh, still got uh, Romania, we've got Poland, and of course we've got here in the UK, uh, BBC Radio 4 Longwave. There is still no confirmed date yet as of doing this video or, uh, you know, when BBC Radio 4 will uh, leave Longwave, but I suppose, it, you know, it will um, eventually um, happen. And um, other stations that can be received here in Europe on Longwave that come from outside of Europe are Morocco and um, Algeria. Okay, I know there's another station, a uh, longwave station that's going to be um, that might come on the air, but the problem is um, it's uh, a fan made station, it probably won't be a lot of power, but it's going to be in the same frequency from what I understand as Algeria on 252 kilohertz, and that's going to be a problem because Algeria is a powerhouse. Um, you know, you can receive it here uh, 24 7 um, here in the UK, uh, for example. Obviously, it comes in much better at night, and it used to um, interfere with RTE Island on the um, same frequency when they were on uh, long wave um, as well. Now, um, in order to, you know, to remember Iceland and all that, you know, when I used to receive Iceland, uh, both the 189 and 207 kilohertz transmi uh, transmitters, you needed decent equipment to receive uh, Iceland because they weren't as easy to receive as, for example, um, obviously, BBC Radio 4 over here, the likes of um, RTL when they were on um, uh, 234, um, you know, and uh, so on, you know, the the, the stronger trans, um, stations, even like that, the likes of France was obviously very easy to receive uh, over here. Um, to receive Iceland, I needed to use my Sony ICF 2010, which is my best um, portable uh, long wave uh, radio by far compared to all my other portables I have or I have uh, owned. Um, I either had to use as well uh, my uh, Wellbrook antenna when it was uh, working, right, and use it in conjunction with my uh, high-end desktop receivers or uh, use it with my Elat SDR, which is my best SDR by far. 
and also as well I'd have to use if I need if I wanted to receive it on one of my Texan portables or my XH data on Longwave because they're not so great on the Longwave band um, I used um, uh, what I've still got is a homebrew or homemade long wave induction antenna which is basically a, a box with wire wrapped around it and it's connected to a dual Kang uh, capacitor and works really well um, and when I use that uh, antenna with one of my portables uh, Chinese portables then I'm able to receive Iceland quite well and even receive it you know indoors but yeah Iceland was a little bit of a challenge to uh, receive um, it, reception depended of course on you know propagation and all that but um, in any case it was very enjoyable and satisfying listening to Iceland because that meant that when you received Iceland you know uh, your long wave equipment was uh, working uh, very well so uh, farewell Iceland you were great to uh, receive and to uh, DX uh, as well and uh, yeah this is a way I'm afraid it's going forward with regarding uh, long wave and medium wave um, in the future. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.